The Whirlwind Cargo Hand Cycle Tricycle is a multi-purpose mobility device providing opportunities for riders to carry cargo over greater distances than may be comfortable with wheelchairs. This video is an assembly instruction video. Unpackage and check the parts list. On the left there is a mainframe chassis, the rear and the front on the right. We have the toolkit which has a pump tire lever, glue, patches, and um, customized wrenches. There's the front wheel, which may, may or may not have a brake. The rear wheel is left and right. The crank boom, the fork, a brake lever, the left and right um, cranks with hand grips attached, chain, stem quill, there's a lower chain guard, there's springs for the centered steering and the seat, there are clamps for the seat and the brake, there's hardware for the brake, this is the seat, this is the brake, which may come as one piece, the brake lock is attached, this is the backrest, and right behind it is the backrest ladder, that's for backrest height adjustment, here we have the seat base, this is the backrest cover, and inside is the tension adjustable backrest, which should be pre-installed on the backrest canes. These are accessories. On the left is a cargo bag. This is an under seat cargo box that's red. This is the front rack. This is a rear cargo box, the large blue box. The smaller blue box is the front cargo box. This is the front fork. The headset bearings are installed. The bottom set ring of bearings um, should make sure that the ring is on the bottom so that the bearings can spin freely. Um, install the fork with the bearings and grease and locate the centering spring before you install the top. You can use a screwdriver to help install the centering spring. It's easiest if you hook it in the orientation shown. The screwdriver helps stretch the spring so that it can be attached. Slide the fork up so that the bearings rest and install the second set of bearings with grease. Here it's shown already installed into the top cup. So when you install it, make sure that the bearings with the retaining rings are installed correctly such that it spins freely without um, rubbing on the metal. Uh, next, locate the locking nut for the headset and the washer. Put the washer on first and the lock nut and install it. Um, if the cup does not have a location for a wrench, you can grip it with your hand and hold it in place while you tighten the headset. To make sure that the headset is properly adjusted, um, it should spin freely without play or jiggle and also not bind on the bearings. This will ensure long bearing life. To install the front chassis and the rear chassis together, um, locate the nuts, bolts, and washers. Position the plates so that the holes line up. The front chassis plates are outside the rear chassis plates and work the bolts through from the outside towards the inside. This can be a little tricky, so use a screwdriver, a soft mallet, or several people and move it up and down in order to get those holes lined up if needed. Here we demonstrate using a screwdriver to help align the holes if it's difficult to get the bolts through. You can use a socket wrench and an adjustable wrench in order to tighten the nuts. You can also use a screwdriver and the tool which is provided in the adjustment kit. Seat assembly beginning with the backrest. This is the installation. Find the backrest ladder and insert it through the loops. Insert an M6 bolt from the outside towards the inside. Attach the spring for the backrest. And put a washer and then a lock nut on. These should be tightened enough so that it is secure. To install the backrest ladder to the seat, 
use an M8 bolt. Install it as shown with a washer and a nylon lock nut as well. This one should be made tight and then backed off slightly so that the seat ladder can still move against the seat. To install the backrest to the seat, use another bolt, insert again, use a washer and a nylon lock nut. All of these should be tightened so that the seat still can, the seat backrest can still move, can still rotate, but everything is secure. To install the backrest canes and the backrest straps, tension adjustable backrest, uh, first untangle all the straps um, and insert the backrest canes into the backrest. Um, you can wiggle them left and right until you get the holes lined up. Make sure that the holes on the left and the right backrest cane are in the same position. There are three positions at 50 millimeter in in intervals. So make sure you select the correct one and the same on the left and the right. Um, it's suggested that you install the bolts with the head backwards and the nut facing forwards as shown. Spread the backrest straps evenly over the backrest. The number of straps um, above and below the various features will differ depending on which height position the backrest is in. You can refer to the diagrams. To thread the buckle, the strap should first be threaded from the backmost part slot in the buckle from behind up to the front and back as shown. And this will ensure maximum strength. This is an image of the final assembly. To put the cover on, position it with the wings on the front position. The logo should be on the back. These wings get wrapped around the backrest canes. And with the Velcro, the hook and loop, they are secured. Backrest cover can be slipped down behind the backrest spreader bar. And at the bottom, fasten the tabs with a piece of Velcro that hold the front and the back cover together. This is the same installation as the Rough Rider, with the exception that the straps are um, interfacing with different parts of the trike. Seat can be set up in different configurations for low and high, depending on the position of the seat clamps. Here I'll show an installation, setting it up for a relatively high seat position for a rider with a long lower leg length. Here I select the third hole from the bottom with a bolt from the outside and a nut is trapped on the inside of the channel as shown. It helps to finger tighten the bolt and then you can use a socket wrench or another wrench. Repeat for the opposite side using the same hole left and right. Here we show the low installation seat position with the clamp with the bolt below the seat rail. Here is the most more common installation. First we can pre-install the front seat guides, then we slip them over the seat rails. For this higher seat position, we are using the seat clamp with the bolt above the seat rails. Here we are choosing a hole that gives us the seat angle that we want. And again, the nut is trapped on the inside, so you only need one wrench on the outside to turn that. It's easiest to do before the wheels are installed. Install the seat base, which is also a cushion, with the guides uh, installed as shown. For the drivetrain installation, first install the front wheel. If it has a brake, make sure that the brake is on the left side and the drive cog is on the right side. Secure the wheel tightly, making sure it's centered in the fork, which you can view from the front. Secure the brake arm if applicable. Slide the crank boom on over the fork and slide on the idler brace as well. You can secure it at the height desired with the quick release or bolt. 
also secure the crank boom on at this point using the bolts um, and you might need to adjust it to make sure that the angle is right later on. To install the uh, stem quill, um, first put it into the steer tube, tighten the bolt with your fingers so it doesn't fall in, and use a wrench to secure it at the height desired. For the right side drive, make sure that the groove in the bottom bracket spindle is lined up with the bolt. And on the non-drive side, you have an option of either putting them in phase or out of phase. In phase is your hands together moving, out of phase is your hands moved opposite. Many riders prefer in phase together for smooth level ground and out of phase for rough terrain. Make sure you tighten these bolts very securely with a 17 millimeter wrench. If the chain is tangled, make sure to detangle it into one uh, loop before installation. To install the chain onto the trike, uh, it's easiest, in my opinion, to first install it over the top crank and then over the cassette on the wheel. Then take the back side of the chain and loop it over the idler. Then tension the front idler brace um, against the torsion spring um, and make sure that you have enough tension to hold the chain securely. That's usually about a turn and a half. Here's another view for the installation of the chain. First installed over the top crank chain ring, then installed over the cassette on the front wheel. Then you can pull the rear chain over the idler wheel and spin in the direction shown to guide the chain over those idler wheels so that the chain remains under tension. This is useful so that you can adjust the height without changing the chain. If needed, you can spin the crank boom so that the cassette at the wheel is in line with the chain ring at the top to keep the drive chain in one plane. Here's a view of the installation of the idler brace. Finally, install the lower chain guard onto the front wheel. This keeps the chain on over rough terrain. Make sure it spins freely without rubbing. The rear wheel clamp has both a bolt for the groove on the axle spindle and also a clamp to grab the axle. It is important to make sure that the groove on the axle spindle is aligned with that the very top with the bolt that is tightened as shown. You can tighten it, jiggle it to make sure that it engaged, and then tighten the lock nut on that M8 bolt. Next, tighten the clamp, which is an M12 bolt using 19 millimeter wrenches, and you can tighten this securely as well. In the process, check to make sure that you have that slot engaged. Assemble and install the rear brake underneath the trike with the curve of the brake arm following the curve of the wheel. The clamp is installed on the right side between the seat clamps and is positioned in such a way to allow for good braking. The clamps are installed over the plastic bushings and the brake clamp is tightened in a position that allows for the brake to be engaged fully and hold the wheel when locked. The brake can be released and engaged using that lock. The optional front brake can be installed. It's easier to install it last. First thread the brake cable through the clamp on the crank boom. Thread it through the cable housing. You can make sure that the, um, that the brake uh, lever is itself is attached to the cable. The housing can be guided down the arm, secured in place as needed. Brake lever is attached with a bolt and a nut. The cable is then threaded through the clamp on the front wheel. The spring is installed and then it's threaded through the brake itself. The front rack is installed into the sockets and secured with bolts if available.